Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Svarm Chatter podcast. In this episode of the podcast, I'm going to be joined once again by Ravaran Lapiansky, who is uh, Rosh Hashiva of Yeshiva of Greater Washington, uh, Tveris Gedalia. And we'll be discussing uh, Sefer Nachlas Yosef on Rus and uh, Ravaran's English adaptation, which is uh, titled Seed of Redemption, which came out, I believe this is about uh, a year or two ago, uh, I believe two years ago. So thank you, Ravaran, for joining me once again. So let's let's start off with with the Nachlas Yosef. We'll talk a little bit about the Machaber, but why? Just first of all, it's just an English translation. It's adaptation. I don't know if you is it something you've done before. Basically, translate a Pirish into English. Why did you do this? So um, the, the Pirish is an incredible Pirish. It it um, in Eretz Yisrael it, it was quite popular. I assume today it's still very popular, but in my days it was popular. Um, it combines so many elements. Um, in one uh, safer that, that is really incredible, small safer, but so many things fall into place. I, I, I wished, uh, unfortunately, people today have a harder time with Hebrew, even Bnei Torah. Um, they, they could read it haltingly, um, and especially the Hebrew is incredibly beautiful and crisp. So I really felt I would like to and make it uh, work, quote unquote, for for the tzibur, and uh, and and so I sort of I I didn't do a word by word translation because that would lose the beauty of the writing, the smoothness of it, the way it's written. I did my best to stay faithful to the idea, but but write it in a language that's readable, that's English, um, not trans, not a translation. So that's why I chose to do it. I myself was extremely inspired by the work, and at this role, it was very, very. It's a, it's a, it's a popular work. Right, and a translation. I think that I think the Rambam writes about that. No, when he talks about translating his farm, that it shouldn't be word for word. They should do some sort correct, of correct, correct, correct. And, and it's always, uh, I'll tell you, when you when you when you're translating, for instance, Ramban and Chumash. So a you you hope to use it as an aid for learning Ramban in Hebrew because. That's a tremendous paid. You also feel it it's sort of presumptuous of you to be able to sort of put, you know, tell the Ramban what to say. So over there, this it is valid when you make a translation as best as possible, but it's a translation. I'm sorry, to save like Nachas Yosef. Yes, he was a very big person, and I'm not I'm not presumptuous enough to, to put those on his shoes. But it's a it's it's somebody who's the, the main purpose is to give us enlightenment and insight, and therefore I think putting it in in a language that I think he would have wanted, as opposed to a specific, uh, is very very medukta is a better way to go. Right. So so let, well, let's talk a little bit about, more about uh, the machaber. Yeah. Uh, it was a uh, Talmud of Slavotka, yes. and this is it's interesting because it's also it's a commentary on Nach. We can talk a little bit about learning, you know, Nach and then Rus. It's not so much the style. It's been a yeshiva even today, but it, especially for, for Slavotka, yeah. Musser kind of a thing. So let but let's talk about the machaber with a little bit of bio that we know about him. Right. So the machaber was a fascinating personality in the sense that. He um, came from Europe. He was born in 1886. He was um, he was actually born in a Polish setting, but he he, he came to Slabotka. Friends brought him to Slabotka. He came a Talmud out to Slabotka. He he came to Tel Aviv in 23, and Tel Aviv at that time was a city of a traditional, formally observant type of people. It was, Tel Aviv always was the modern city. Make no no mistake, Tel Aviv was always the, the modern city. But included many people who were still familiar in the big picture, like like the old time traditional Jew who had familiarity, but was not terribly observant or very observant. He, he lived off, he had like a little hotel or whatever, a restaurant, hotel, but he had the knack of teaching in a way that these people really were inspired and respected. They felt he was sophisticated. He was giving them over a message that they could deal with. And a lot of people became closer to Yiddishkeit because of him. So we might call this the first type of Kiruv. In Europe, 
the old time Rabbanim with thunder, you know, fire and brimstone, and hope to bring closer to people who were sinning. I don't think it was terribly effective. It might have it might have prevented some people from going off, but but it certainly was not effective and bring anybody back. His derech was mashcheni. He would he presented ideas so beautiful, so sophisticated, so nice that he actually um, was mashpiel atayv on a lot of people. That's that that's a fascinating part of his person. Yeah, and there's, uh, what I, I read up on him, uh, David Safir shared with me that the Hill Goldberg wrote an article between Berlin and Slabotka, the life and writings of Yosef Lipowitz. I, I saw that the article talks a lot about him. I saw it there, so it even speaks about, we want to talk a little bit about his writings. I mean, Rus is the famous one, he has some others for him, but, and I, about, he, I think he, he unfortunately didn't have children, and his wife was sold everything, even a wedding ring, to be able to print his for him. Right. So there is a fascinating um, little secret about the Sefer. Um, and this is that if he did, they, they did publish some other things from him. Um, none of them have the um flow, or um, none of them have the um beauty or the flow of this. So, wh- where did Nachas also get it from? So I heard this from Reb Moshe Fabstein, and then I later heard from others also. There's a fascinating story about this. One of these people that was, one of the people that was Niskara by him was somebody called Avram Kariv. Avram Kariv was a Slabotka Yid born in 1900. Um, he learned in Tells and the Mir, so um, and then he took a left turn or a U turn. <laughs> you 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 name the turn that he took, and he um, went off the derech. He became a maskil, a writer, a philosopher, and everything. He um, he uh, learned. He studied in Odessa and Beis Medrash Lamor Mivrim, which is a uh, a scholarship place, Moscow. And um, got a degree in math and so on. Now, in 1934, he came to Israel. He was, um, you know, he made Aliyah. And over here, he was, uh, um, you know, he was a writer, a, a fry writer, a typical Moscow, so on. He became close to Rabbi Yasser Livwitz. I don't know which came first, but after World War II, he basically began f- becoming very, very critical of the um, non from writers and general European culture. He basically said that, you know, what, what what's all that culture worth if this is where it came from? This is what happened with it. And therefore, what he did was... He in a, I mean, he rejected it. He became the enfant terrible of the Israeli literary circles. He was considered to be the very top, the very best. He stopped. He started writing from traditional stuff. He wrote the the Mosar of Cook put out on the on the morale and his and his, and his machshava, very beautifully written. He 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 was, he was really an extremely lucid. Um, and 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 the writer wrote very well, put things together, and so he was mushba and and sort of I don't know as a gift or whatever he wrote up the, the Shurim and Rus and Achzol Sefer. So so this this Sefer itself is the product of of his own work. Uh, um, it's amazing, and and it, 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 it's in a dome. There, there are other things that they've put out from him. It's 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 like very regular. Musa, it doesn't have that beauty and that flow that Joseph has, and that's why it was put out by Kariv. So, would you say the safer Nachas Yosef on Rus is so? It's like a, so. It's like a Musa safer. It's like a Musa style safer on Nachas. It, what's incredible is well, Musa. If Musa means to make you a better person, the answer is yes. But the the big question is always. It's like I I, I guess it's it's like. Uh, I don't know what muscle to give, but there are certain foods that it depends 
how you make it. It could be sweet, it could be sour, it could be sharp, it could be tangy, it could be uh, tasteless. Um, it, it's The beauty of it is as follows. He uses only the Madrash Chazal to explain it. In other words, there are, it's all with the Chazal. One, he is showing you how a critical reading of the words flow into the Chazal. He's sort of he's sort of taking on the journey that Chazal with their Mac and showing how imperceptible little things in the Pasik give away that the Pasik is something more. And the lessons that he says from Chazal resonate with an intelligent, sophisticated person. It's 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 not like a a, a shmuz come from out of no way. It's it's touching on things that people um, can relate to, and that's why I think it had such a profound effect. I, I, I mean, it's hard for me. I, I'll, let me give just one word that jumps at me, but um, it, it, that uh, the way it says that when 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 Boaz turned towards her, she said. In other words, I, I, I know, fine, it's nice you're giving me, but you acknowledge my presence. I'm a nobody. You, you've turned around and you're acknowledging my presence. And, and, and to me, that's a, that, that, that's a lot more meaningful than, than the wheat you're giving me. It, it, so here you have an idea. We're looking at the Pasik. This is not a this this is the Pasik. Lahakirani. Madhuatsamakhabilahakirani. You've taken notice of me. I'm a nobody and a nothing, and I take notice of me. It's 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 something there's another thing that 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 that, 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 that again when you think about it, 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 it you know we have we don't usually draw a good picture. In the beginning, it, it explains what the moment of her arrival back to Israel was with her, with Rus. Naomi's coming back. Wh- who was Naomi? He said, this was the royal family of Israel. This was the leadership. There was a famine there. There was a war. And he picked himself up and betrayed his country. He's, he's the guy who sold out his country. He said, Rabbi Isai, you drown with the ship. I'm off with my daughters, with my sons. And 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 having a good time and more. Mov was the sworn enemies of Kali Israel, and that's it. He left them to join the Nazis, and they married in. They married Gaius. So the, the level of rejection to them, I mean, absolute rejection is what it should be. And now Nomi comes back with Rus. So it's not just a question. I mean. And the idea that Boaz would marry this, the idea that people could be forgiving to them, you know, he 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 he, he and he fleshes everything out with the chazal, with the psukim, with the meanings, with the feelings, and it's so real and lifelike. That's his kaya. It's very easy, Musa. Well, you see that you have to do this, 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 this. When what you're talking about is beyond anything that we're holding by. Here he's talking about the things that are so real. And he points out the tiniest Chazal had. He's, he's, he shows how Chazal saw in the word somewhat of a slight taina on, on, on Rus. Everything is 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 so real, lifelike, and in the Pasik and in the Chazal. That and 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 that's and it's written so lucidly and and and, and flows. So that's an incredible combination. Yeah, I, and and I think we should, you know, also mention in the beginning has like these two introductions, one and a mini introduction. I think is he's one of the things he touches on is that overarching theme of Rus is Chesed, and uh, you know you already mentioned there with Boaz when he's talking to Rus, and I think that that theme of Chesed comes up. I mean, he starts off comparing Rus to Eve about suffering and but how it differs. Right, right, exactly. Exactly. What happens? What does a person do with suffering? Where does it take him to? And, and and these are all um, so lifelike. Um, it, it, the sensitivity to he has he has a, a, a part where the, where Bo, where Rus came to Boz's tent, and he found her. And then in the morning, 
as as son of God, he tells her, wait one minute, I have to give you something for Nomi. He says, every second was precious because if they would discover him, that would be the scandal. And he said, but she, she, Nomi needs also acknowledgement. Someone has to tell her, I remember you. And so he, 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 he took a few moments to pack up a gift for her, to give to her. All these things are just so... Um, you know, they, they they touch on things that 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 are real and and life like. Yeah, and this chesed is the reason he explains. You know, I mean, this kind of comes up. It'll kind of come up for everyone. Why do we read Rus on Shavuos? What, what's what's the sheikh is Rus to Shavuos? This is the classic question. I mean, this is what he touched on. This has to do with chesed, the fact that we're reading it on Shavuos. Right, but 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 it's the ultimate chesed, the chesed of taking back a person, rebuilding a family that you really wanted to forget. And 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 say and reaching out and and bringing them back in again and so on, uh, yes, that's that's what he speaks about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then he also there's also a another introduction to Rus. We talked about when Rus takes place. We made a him when when it's going yeah. on, what's taking place, what's the massive like in the area. That... And, and, right, he paints a generation falling apart and disintegrating in ways that we could relate to, understanding. Um, what it means that the top began crumbling, and people were looking for material goods, and 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 a slow disintegration of of, of uh, um you know of of the whole of the of Israel. Right, and and how he explains that even that you know the cause the famine, and then you have Eli Melech, you have the leader, you have from from yes. Shemit Yehuda, and then in all this there there's a flicker of hope, as you titled that like a subtitle. And, and he keeps, he just he just walks out, he abandons them. Right, right, and 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 when we think about it, when we paint the picture of it, yes, can we think of it? What would our reaction be to the royal family that basically closed the light and said, "Rabbi Sai, you drown with the ship. I'm saving myself." And my wife and I'm becoming a a, a, a Mavi. I'm... Yeah, yeah. They really, they really just walk out and they go. They they, they leave to Moyev, and then uh, you know, and, and he he goes through that. And I think, as you mentioned, then you know, he walks through the whole uh, what happens there with them, and then but then they come back. You know, he goes through obviously the beginning with not with with Rus and Arpa and with Nami and what happens there, and then how Nami ends up. Picking herself up, that's another big thing, I think, another thing that he, how she, she, even despite this, she didn't go back, she ends up going back, dejected, beat down, but she goes back, she goes back with Russ. Right, correct, correct, and and the difference, yes, the difference of what what it took for her to keep going, and what it took for, and, and why Arpa rejected, all of these points, and again, it's always using Hazal, and, and, and you feel this is exactly what they meant. Right, right, exactly, um, and, and like you already mentioned, the part where Nami sends Rus and Rus agrees to go to Boyaz in the night, and there's a scandal, and Boyaz wakes up, and he <laughs> talks about how if there wasn't a chesed, had Boyaz uh, cursed her, that would have been the end, but he, he has a chesed, he, he didn't, and he w- walks through that also. And then the, the, he goes to, again, the, the meet of chesed at the end with um, with, with, with the goyal, and Boyaz goes right away, he's going to beguile her. Yes, and, and, and understanding... You know, if, if, if we flush it out and, and give it, do you know what it means? Boaz was a god of Do you know what it means for him to marry a scandalous person? This is a person who's, whether she was muta or not, was okay. You needed a psak bez say she's muta. She came from a family so tainted. Boaz is the god of and and his legacy, and he could have the Nisoyan to reject her. His cousin, the one who was closer, rejected her, and 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 like he writes, and this girl's name is never mentioned. He said, "I don't want my name to be erased," and he's called Plony Almoni. So, so the irony of it is, he didn't do the right thing because of his reputation, and he has no reputation left. He's Plony Almoni; will be forever known as Plony Almoni. Right, and Boyes is the one that everyone knows. Yes, yes, and David Amalek, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I don't know if there are any other examples you want to pick up. Or this, this I think like... the whole thing, David, you know, we call the city redemption because David Amalek's job, more than anything else, is to find every lost seed in Kali Yisrael. Everything in Kali Yisrael that had been, so all the people that are there, but they're suffering a little bit, fine. They need a little patching up. But 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 Nitche Yisrael means people who are buried in who knows where. 
They they don't know the Eden. They don't they don't remember the Eden. Nothing. The ability to find the lost kernel of Taiv and Israel had to come through this. So Boaz, who, who discovered it in in in, uh, in you know in 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 this in this marriage, that's where you have David from. Redemption means the person that can redeem the pieces that are gone. Right. And and so this is a safer. I should uh, point this out. I think you said you've been giving Shurim on this for many years. It's not something you just... Uh, right. It, it, it's safer that, you know, I, part of the yeshiva, the yeshiva does a lot of work in the community. We, we're, we're located in the, in the heart of the community. So there's a lot of it's natural. We have different Shurim thing for men, learning. So, you know, it's, it's part of the yeshiva's things. And a, a share for women on Shur was, was part of it. Uh, I don't know if there were any special reasons. So I was looking for a safer, and I said, "We'll do Nachas Yosef." I found it a safer that that could easily give it over in a way that you know, it's, it's sort of relevant. And I started giving so every every year. Second day was sometimes first day was depends on that. That's really scheduling issues. I would give I would give the the share, and um, as uh, Hashkacha would have it. My mother passed away a few years ago, six, uh, six years ago on Shavuos, uh, the second day, and uh, it became, the shir became Lila Shmosa. It was sort of a very fitting shir. You know, it's a women's shir, not a self this, so that that's, yeah, that's part of the uh, Hashkacha. Yeah, and if you want to mention that your mother, in the in the back of this uh, English safer you have in memoriam, you did uh, write a little bit about your mother's life. <laughs> Yes, um, yeah, my mother, Allah Shalom, came from Poland and you know, went through the it was it went through the war and it was also a, a sort of redeemed seed in many ways. You know, the people were like there was nothing left from anything, and the Kaddish Baruch was was Mekabetz and Tzisrael and Baruch Hashem. It's like there's a lot of uh, I, you know, I, I, wrote, I, I write about my mother letting me go to Yeshiva at a very young age and when. When basically going to yeshiva was was uh, for good, uh, wasn't <laughs> there were very few trips home and so on. And I, I felt it was a very fitting, uh, a very fitting place to put a few words about her. Yes. Yeah, and I'll explain the, the safer. So you, the way you uh, did the, the safer was published is that this, uh, it's it's in it's in English, but in each uh, in each in each uh, this, the pasuk is in Hebrew in like a gray box with the translation there in bold, and then the bottom is the comment to English translation commentary. Okay. In the back, there is a full Megillah, Pusik by Pusik, line by line, with the English on the you know the opposite page. So you have right. the Megillah in there, and you have the whole thing. I think altogether, say if it's about two hundred pages, maybe maybe it's a little a little, a little less, one hundred seventy, you know, one hundred eighty pages. Not a big paper, right? It's uh, it's very learnable. Yes. Yeah, it's very learnable. It flows very nicely. I don't know if the Hebrew, the Hebrew comes in and out. The Hebrew edition is available. It's like a white safer. Sometimes available, sometimes not. The English one is definitely available. I'll be a link in the show's notes for those interested in buying this and checking it. And and the English, you know, I I will say the translation is is excellent. The adaptation more than translation. It it flows very nicely and you really can read through it. And like I said, really get a feel for this kind of... uh, yeah. Yeah, most of style comment, every time comment, you really could take out. You feel the Megillah and what uh, what Megillah's Rose is talking about, and it's not not big either. Like the Megillah, it's short, and uh, he really explains so much. It's a, it's a, and, and I, I do hope people make the transition to the Hebrew. At the end of the day, Lashikaidish is the language that 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 flows best. But the whole life, it's a stepping stone because uh, in that small, it is. It's a small safe in Hebrew. It's a hundred pages. And yet there's so much, and it's so beautiful, so clear. I'll tell you, they have a story there. I, I think I wrote it. Rabbi Gedali Nadal was a big tamar of the of the of the Chazanish. That Nadal was an extraordinary genius, and cerebral is the word that best describes him. And um, he was a person not given to easy emotions at all. When he picked up the sefer and he read it, he sobbed through it. He could put him put it down, and he said he doesn't know if in five hundred years after that it was written. And and no, I, I knew him a drop Rabbi Dai Nadal. I'd spoken to him once or twice, and so on. But to 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 evoke that type of emotion <laughs> in a person like that um, was fascinating to me. And, and other people, it's 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 a it's a savior that really it, it brings out a lot. 
Uh, who would you say would uh, benefit from reading it? Everyone, what what kind of uh, what? It, is... I'll tell you. To me, besides the Etzim Limud itself, it 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 it, it goes well with it. It's not. It, you know, it's it's not a safer that you could say is only for a certain type of Tom Chacham or a certain type of simple person. But I, what I really would love to hope be accomplished is that we learn how to use Chazal appropriately, be able to construct, project Chazal into life. That's what they meant to do. They meant to give us the picture in a way that would be relevant to us. Um, it, I find that to be remarkable. It it, 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 it should be learned with about pair, but you you can take to, you can you you can take it and then do anything you want. Just you can, you can read the medrashim, you can look at the fantastic stories, you can you can you can say you know and a chutzal sire this is this and this so so certainly we this and this. The different you know that's not saying you would prepare it many ways. His ability to bring out the points in ways where you say well, that's so obvious in the pasuk and it's exactly what Chazal meant. And I know it in life. Those three things flowing in tandem, I, I would hope we were able to learn from that. Right. It's kind of really the whole Pirish is really bringing out Chazal and Madrashim with the Psukim together. It's really doing the Tarshwa with the Torah. It's, it's seamless. And, and that's what I found about it to be ex- extraordinary. But how many other svar? I mean, just as off off topic. I mean, other on on nach like this that that jump to mind that do such a thing like that with the psukim. I don't know. The Malbum some places is able to bring out. It's hard. It's on. Uh, it's hard. There, Aleph. There isn't all that much on nach. There is, but not not what you would expect because nach wasn't learned that much. Uh, if anything was tangential, um, you know, it, it, it's it's uh, and and this style is a unique style. So. I, I, I'm a person that aware doesn't mean anything. Lorena and Araya, I haven't learned all that much myself. Um, I did put out something on Nach, but it's very different. I, I did like Isare Torah. I collected Rishonim in different places that speak about pieces in, in Tanakh that are not on the, uh, you know, that are not in place. And it's called Isare Nevi'im. It's been out for a while. It's basically to help fill in because. Nach is so obscure. Sometimes it's so difficult to understand the parishes. And when you have a Ramban or an Ezra or an Ikrim or something which sheds light on it, it's a, it, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a treasure. So it, it, but it's not it doesn't it's 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 not consistent in any sense, it's wherever I found. So there are many parishes that are not illuminated, and, and the parishes I do bring a shine and they illuminate in a certain from a certain you know point, but it's it's not uh, not, nothing uh, not, nothing like this. I, I don't know. I'm, the Balm of some places it, it brings Balm has a way of bringing the whole story together and so on. And the Balm was the Balm, but on this type of style, I'm not aware. I, it's not a low rain and a raya. I, I can't, uh, you know. <laughs> right, and you say the Nevi'im, you did, it was it's not on everything. You didn't do it on the whole Nach. And I did the uh, I did Nevi'im Rishonim just because this that's learned the most. And it's and, and there are parishes there that just are baffling. And wherever we shine them illuminated for us, it's it's you know a matter of manoim. Right. So this is really something. I mean, Russell comes up, people on uh, Shavuot are small yeah. to read it, and it's it's something. This is a like, like I saying, there's something everyone can read on Nach and kind of yes. take out of something on Nach. Maybe yeah. people aren't familiar with Nach. Correct. Okay, now now in general about doing an English adaptation as you did here, I think it was something I don't I don't believe you've done this elsewhere. Is this something you would do again on a different safer in the future? Or is it a unique project? I, 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 I'm I, I'm thinking it, it, it is the problem with it is obviously it takes you have to you have to be able to feel a can I do an adaptation of the safer like you said like Ramban al Taira, you know you're taking the safer Ramban and and. You, you you're pretending you know what he said, um. So so there's a certain level of like you can't adapt somebody else's words. Um. There's a there's a Jewish joke, an old Jewish joke, that they gave a yid to translate Shakespeare into Yiddish. So he worked on it and worked on it, and then there was this huge volume, and it's written by it, and it says in Yiddish. I'll assume the audience doesn't know Yiddish. But I'll use the words because um, it's uh, it just fits better. 
It says, the Aller Werken from Shakespeare, Shakespeare's all, all works, verbessert und vergresset, greatly improved and greatly enlarged by Yanko Goldenflach, or whatever, you know. So we, we have a tendency, we, we, we take over something else's, we, we make it our own. Um, so there's always that, that, that uh, fear. So what you're trying to do is to take the ideas and to present them in, in ways that people, somebody did it actually, there's a safer, uh, he did it with Reb Shamsha Fall Hirsch's works. I think it was called Hegione Yehudi, maybe. He, so he, he basically has, on different topics, sort of an adaptation of different points of Shanshu Fall Hirsch. I, I never, I, I looked at it once or twice. I, I thought it was Shanshu Fall Hirsch for some reason. And, because, and then I realized it's not. But... Um, so he attempted to give it over in a bit of a different language and so on. I don't know. It's, it's always a, it's always a, a difficulty because you're dealing with somebody else's, and especially if the person is a Gavi Rabba, you you want to know that you're doing it justice. Right. So, I, do you have any? Uh, so you saying nothing was specific planned? Nothing. No, I, I you know that there's things. I'm, I'm, there's still things that I'm playing with that I would like, maybe. But I don't know. After let, let's let's not talk about Davos Leibolol. Okay. Okay. Now, what what about in general? Any any projects as far as more? Any projects? There's a safer that there's safer that just literally I got Friday the first copy of it in Hebrew. Um, I mean, we are talking about it in the first for some the the some seichel. It is a. Um, the same cycle. It, it's um, it, it's something that again I do it in yeshiva, and then it 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 morphed into a sefer. I felt in yeshiva that um, two parts of Torah Shabbat Peh are very lacking: taimim and uh, targum. In other words, people don't have any idea what taimim is. It's like the little sing song that you sing at your bar mitzvah, without understanding what it does to the Pasuk and how it changes it and so on. And Targum. to be Mavis Sedrat, Targum. So over the years, what we did was, uh, by Kiddush, I spent five minutes, I collected um, a, a lot of Pirushim from others farm um, uh, that explained the Pasuk, enlightened the Pasuk, based on some Shinu in the time. So I'm not talking about the genre of, you know, Kadma Vaza Revee, like by Yehuda. Those are Muslim. Those are those are not. I'm talking about where the passing of the Pasik gives you insight into what the meaning is. And and um once you become sensitive to it, you realize the importance of laning with the right cadence, having the right stop and pause between different um, places and different words and how much it changes the meaning of the sentence. There's a famous thing in English, um, comma save lives. Um, I don't know if you've heard it, but it goes along the lines of the sentence, I'm having my grandmother for dinner, um, means that you're a cannibal and particularly mean cannibal. If you put a comma in and say, I'm having my grandmother for dinner, that's a very beautiful, nice thing. Um, the same thing is true of Sukim. If you divide up a Pasik, so we go through two of the of the different Pirushim every week and point out where you see the Shinui. And then and this is all taken from others' farm. And then uh, Targum, um, I also I picked out the pieces where the Targum makes some important change. I explain what the Targum word means. And usually if there's Machlux and Gemara, there's a Pirish and Gemara that's relevant to it, or, or the Ramban or the Rashi who learn differently, I'll bring it down. Um, this moment just came out, it's about uh, 500 pages. And it, I just, it, it morphed it. it like, like everything, in, every year we kept, I kept you know adding more stuff and finally I decided to put it out as a safer, so that we don't have to have papers floating around the yeshiva. There used to be like these, uh, you know, uh, 
pages, uh, you know, with uh, things on it. So this, so, so this is this just came out. It's not in the stores yet. It'll this is Mitzvah Hashem. The card will be there. Okay, yeah, and and so we'll maybe maybe Mitzvah Hashem will do a podcast that dedicated specifically specifically to discussing the yeah. safer. And uh, yeah, once once it's out and available, and it's definitely something unique. It's not something like this really. I don't I don't think it doesn't come to mind as much. So I'll tell you on Targum. It's becoming more and more popular. I used I used the safe as I start. There was a safe uh, tuva yain by by tuva wine in Etzistral. In the recent years, as Matt sorry from Biakad Levzer and Vracha, in recent years it's become more common, more and more place. Up. But whatever it is, I I left there just to elaborate more, explain the you know the differences and the Rishonim and so on, and um, in the Targum there is a fascinating safe. Uh, maybe we'll talk about some other time. Is somebody like would put out? It says it's called Vayevino Bemikrot. Rev Naftali Gedinger, it's incredible goyness. He put it out twenty five years ago at least. Um, I bring as many pieces from there. I, I, again, I shorten it a little bit, but but then again, there's a lot of from the and Malbum says some extraordinary beautiful things. Xavier Kabbalah, very just when you read it, you say, "Wow, yeah, that that's why the pasuk is 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 passed that way." Right, I think, I think, so I, I think there's also Parsha again, and then I think, I think the Reb Wine, I think, I think maybe, is it, it's Yaina I don't remember the name. Yaina Toiv, Yaina Toiv, right, Yaina Toiv. So I yeah. think they recently, a couple of years ago, they reissued it, and I think it's five volumes now, redone, new font and everything, and also he has maybe on Megillus or something. I, I, think I, have the, I, have, I have the two volumes, and then Parsha is, is on Targum, is definitely, Parsha is the, Parsha is the uh, Rolls Royce of it, incredible job. Unfortunately, the author was Nifta. They put out, I think, Beit Shemesh Vayikr Bechayev. But Midbar, I think, was posthumously, but it yeah. was done. The Devarim, I think, they're trying to work on. Except that it's it's massive, and, and, and he, he he deals with a lot of very, very fine things, like might be an extra Vav, and it's past tense, future tense, really things that are, you know, a hairline. I, I try to pick out the things that are the most uh, noticeable and and the, the things that are, that should be obvious, right? Is is great, but it's like I said, but made was posthumously, but it's it's a little uh, overkill. You have to really want that kind of level of detail. It's like a it's, it's, a, it's, a it, it's it's amazing. It's all different cells. It's it's a work that needed to be done, and but but it's encyclopedia. It's not it's not something you could do on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, but then I meant on the time room, there really is. You know, like I said, Targum, there's something time room, there really isn't much. So uh, this. Right. Is, it's important. Okay, so Mr. Jim, we'll, we'll looking forward to it. Maybe we'll do a podcast on that. So, anyways, uh, thank you, Aaron, for joining me once again. Okay, and we'll talk about that nice to speak with you. Okay, call to that. Okay, there you go.